So I went from being broke to being a millionaire in a year. What's up guys, it's Supercar Blondie. So we're about to visit one of the biggest classic Ferrari dealers in the world. like the most expensive cars just laying around on the lawn. Oh my god, look how much of this lawn is. Oh, you can do donuts. Oh, you could stop like hundreds of cars. Thank you, wow. Oh no, that's not great. But what's her favourite classic? Hey, any that she can bite the wheels. <laughs> if I start to up and drive. Yeah. Oh really? She goes along and just tries it. to bite yeah, it. And why did you choose these ones? Choose these yeah. to display right now. Hey, because they're all for sale. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're all for sale. I love guys. it. They're all for you sale. straight at a point. <laughs> this was restored. This is one of the I did a collection called the White Collection. I love white. So, so your favourite Ferrari would be painted white? Yeah. With what, what colour interior? White, blue. White and blue? Yeah. Oh really? So, so it was I a perfect that. perfect combo. And that's a Lusso. It's in the value of that. 1.2 million pounds. 1.3? So this is the 11th car that Ferrari ever made. What? And it's worth about a million pounds, yeah. right? Okay, so what do we have here then, JC? It's a 275 GTB4, 1966. One at 27 in right-hand drive. Yep. And the price of that is two and a quarter million pounds. I feel like we're working our way up here. So we're going to get quarter. more and more expensive. Yeah. This one's actually 1950, one of three. It's totally restored. It's actually having great value. That's a million pounds. Yeah, only. For one of three, you said? Yeah. Wow. Honestly. And it's beautiful colour, isn't it? Yeah. This is a 250 competition special. Okay. 1955. And the price of that is $12 million. It's the only one in the world. Now we're talking. Wow. The only one in the world. Yeah. Wow. It's a one off, all aluminium bodied. So it's not because there's only one left in decent condition in the world, they only ever made one? They only ever made one. Wow. And how much would this have gone for back then? In its day, probably about 10,000, which is a lot of money in 1955. Right. Yeah, true. $10,000. I mean, you probably bought a mansion for $10,000. Wow. Wow. It's like pretty amazing. <laughs> This is a long wheelbase cow spider, 250 California spider. The California is probably my favourite Ferrari. Sit there and put it, touch the accelerator and you feel the power. I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen to me here, JC. You're converting me. <laughs> out of anyone I've met. Should we go in and have a chat? Yeah, you want to see a little surprise before then? Yeah, I'd love a little <laughs> surprise. These are my 
private cars. Oh, so these ones are definitely not for sale. These are not for sale. They see, <laughs> you can't see anything moly. behind door number one. <laughs> it's empty. It's, uh, it's on its way. It's <laughs> being serviced. Okay, so you're about to get a new something or other. Can you reveal what it is? It's special. <laughs> Oh wow. Wow. Why this colour combo? But it's a kind of that's, matching but that's because me, you know. Blue and yellow. I just love that. I used to have a 250 GTO in this colour. So you wow. saved your favourite colour for the La Ferrari. Yeah, I love that. In white. So you've got white interior and white exterior. I've never seen one like that before. No, it's, and you, you wouldn't see it's also got a beautiful stripe line yeah. down there. Gorgeous. And a blue roof. Yeah, that's like amazing. This. Which is rare. Wow, yeah. This is and it's even like got like the paint here. And on the back, you won't see any coops done like this. So this is the most expensive license plate in Britain. Yeah. So Five, it's... £520,000. And that is everybody wanted one of these. Yeah, get. of course. Yeah. So you got one of the first, you were in the first round. Yeah, yeah they, they only made 210. Yep, and you're not allowed to sell it, right? No. For another year and a half, year? Yeah, well, I wouldn't sell you it. You wouldn't sell it anymore. I've been offered fortunes, I wouldn't sell it. You could offer me five million, I wouldn't take it. JC started as a tea boy and now he's, you know, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, classic yeah. Ferrari yeah. dealer in the world. So, there will be no other Ferrari dealer in the world able to match the amount of cars I have sold. It's impossible today because of the prices. For all of the people watching going, I want to be you one day or I want to be where you are one day, how do I start? I mean, that's just testament. You just need to start I, somewhere, don't I, you? I had a dream. You had a dream. Yeah. What was your dream actually back then? I, to own a Ferrari. <laughs> to own one Ferrari yeah. was his dream. That yeah. was my dream. So you didn't finish high school, No. you started as a tea boy and you just had a dream of owning a Ferrari yeah. one day. Basically you got yourself in the door of a newspaper as yeah. a tea boy. Getting Collins, bacon roll, two teas, four sugars, be quick about it, move your ass. Yeah. I thought, a job's a job, yeah. better than being a milkman. Right. Got to start somewhere, right? And Why, because tea is better than milk? <laughs> yeah. It's true. I had worked as a milkman, it was freezing in the morning. Horrible so, job, yeah. Well, then Bobby Kennedy got assassinated on June the 6th, 1968, I believe. Yeah. It was my day off. Yeah. And that morning I heard the radio and I thought, oh, I'm going in the office. And then the day, the news editor came out and said, booming voice, who's the boy who came in his day off? Into the editor's office now. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you thought you were going to get fired. I was age 16. Right. And the editor, I remember, Willie Steen, he rushed up, he grabbed my hand, he shook it and he went, this is what journalism's built on. And I have to say it the way he said it. He said, I can't get my effing reporters to come in the day off. Yeah. And you come in the day off on your own accord. You start next Monday, course called T-Line Shorthand. And if you pass, you're in the telephone room, if you pass that in three months, you're a trainee reporter. Wow. I went freelance and I earned eleven thousand pounds freelancing. I was That's amazing. doing stories. And what year was this in? Around nineteen seventy six. So in the late seventies, around eleven thousand pounds a year was a lot of money. In the mid seventies, yeah, it was a fortune. Yeah. yeah, I bought a Ferrari Dino for six grand. Seven grand. Wow. How many years from being a T boy to that? point did you have your first Ferrari? Uh, 1968, eight years. So eight years later you bought your first Ferrari? Yeah, and I got a reputation for getting exclusives. I was hated by all the other journalists. Yeah. It's a bit like the car world. This is what we're doing right now, this is an exclusive, right? You've never yeah. had any car social media blogger in here yeah. doing this, so yeah. we're getting an exclusive, yeah. right? Yeah. What I'm interested in next is how you actually went from owning your first Ferrari to becoming a Ferrari dealer. That was a little bit of luck again. Yeah. Uh, so you need to be in the right place at the right time. You've got to have luck on your side yeah. and you've got to work really hard. Yeah. My Ferraris, I was in a really good time. I was making plenty of money. A friend gave me a tip about a share. He said, oh, I'm going to make a fortune. I'm like an idiot. I bought all these shares. And I bought more shares than I had cash. 
But I can't figure they're going to go up in value. I'll sell them before right. I have to pay for them. <gasps> yeah. And then that Black Friday or whatever they called it in 1987, the stock market crashed. The shares I bought went from 80p to 30, which was like, oh my god. Oh my god, I woke up and I thought, I don't believe it. Your heart just sank. I mean, this oh, was. Oh, I got it. I thought, God, I worked all this. I've been shot at, shit at, and bombed at in Beirut. I've travelled the world. I survived everything and I've lost it all because of some stupid stock market crap. Wow. But you still had the Ferrari, right? No, I had to sell. And I phoned all the dealers, all the dealers, and they're all going, no, no, no. Yeah. Well, we're only making £10,000 and we've got to service it and guarantee warranty. Oh my God. So I took the offer and a couple of days later I drove past and I thought, I saw it in the window for 30000 more. Yeah. I thought, you lying, cheating sons of wow. But they lied to me, because to me another 20,000 was like... Yeah, a lot. I was broke. Yeah. Was broke. So you went from a high, high to right down. Down. How yeah. old were you then? Uh, I was 35. He said, it's a rising market. So I thought, okay, if it's a rising market, if you can do it, and you're a doughhead in my mind. That's the Ferrari dealer? Yeah. Yeah, thought, who you sold the you're car You're a to. jerk. Yeah. You know, if you can do it, I can do it. So I did a bit of research the next month or two. I thought, yeah, the market is creeping up in these cars. I put a business plan together and I borrowed £300,000 at the local pub from all my mates. And I went around all these dealers and I put deposits on £3 million worth of cars. So you called your friend and said literally, can you lend me 300000 yeah. I want to put down a deposit on I'm, I'm going to, this many I'm cars. I'm going to do this car business and you can be a shareholder. So I said to all the people who put the money in, do you want to stay as a shareholder in Talacrest or take 15% on your money? They all took the 15%. And then they're all out. Yeah, it's a bit wow. of a boo-boo on their part. My turnover in the first year, yeah. I predicted a million. Yeah. It was 12 in 1989. So I went from being broke to being a millionaire in a year. These dealers phoned up, you can't advertise my car, you haven't paid for it. I said, check with your lawyer. I can do what I want. It's my car. You can't sell it. I own it. If I don't pay you, you can sue me. Yeah. But so that, at that point, so if you put your 10% deposit down, you basically own the car. I'm a legal owner, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so you were rightly selling your car on yeah. before you even had the car. Yeah. And I made £500,000 profit on the 10 cars. That was how Talacrest started. <laughs>